Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if this is your first time here. I usually am a makeup slash lifestyle beauty YouTuber, but today I am going to be talking about some things that I don't really ever talk about, but I feel that they're like really important. I think that they need to be talked about. This is a really, really hard video for me to create. With what I'm going through in my life right now, I felt that I want to be open and honest and I also want to kind of shed some light on this subject of mental illness. So I've had a lot of things going on in my life, a lot of stressors, just a lot of things kind of like over the years that have brought me to like the place that I have come to this past year. I want to talk about anxiety, depression, mental illness anxiety attacks, panic attacks, and the big one, which is suicide. Like I said, these are not like easy things for me to talk about. They've been things that have been like probably the hardest things that I've ever gone through. This has been like the toughest year of my life, emotionally speaking. Um, and it's taken a huge physical toll on my body because of it. But I felt like these are things that I can't stay silent about. And I just want to raise awareness on the subject in, in its entirety. entirety. So just bear with me as I get through this video. Um, there will probably be a lot of editing because I just want to make sure that I'm able to get out what I need to say to you guys. So for me, I would say that, you know, I've struggled with anxiety my whole life. I just am going to go through and kind of talk about my story a little bit with you guys. Yeah, I've kind of struggled with anxiety my whole life. It's been just a part of me since I was a little girl from just things that I went through when I was younger to junior high, high school time. Um, it's just always been something that's been like a big part of my life. And I would say... After having kids, I dealt with some postpartum depression, which if you don't know what that is, and I will read you the definition of what postpartum depression is. Okay, so it says it's depression suffered by a mother following childbirth, typically arising from the combination of hormonal changes, psychological adjustment to motherhood, and fatigue. Some of the symptoms that you can feel are anger, anxiety, guilt, hopelessness, loss of interest or pleasure, mood swings, panic attacks, crying, irritability, restlessness, fatigue, loss of appetite, weight gain or weight loss, lack of concentration or unwanted thoughts, depression, fear, insomnia, or repeatedly going over thoughts. Repeatedly. Sorry. So those are just some of the symptoms of postpartum depression. Um, like I said, I started to go through that after having my first child, which was almost four years ago now. After having my second, which was almost two years ago, it got worse. And I think that there was so much going on for me in that whole year from I literally had her and we had to pack up our whole house. We were transferring from the military to civilian life and it was packing, it was, you know, dealing with separating from the military, moving, and then living with family for eight months, and then now I'm in my own home, and it's just been an intense year. So I didn't have time to even like process much of my feelings and think about things, but it just got so much worse over time. I thought that I was okay, and I wasn't okay. I was dealing with the postpartum depression, but then in return, because I didn't really deal with it, it um, turned into it turned into just clinical depression. I was clinically depressed. I have had such a tough year, you know, found out that I had an autoimmune disease, which in and of itself didn't help with depression. There are days where I didn't want to get out of bed. I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to be a mother. I didn't want to go out and do anything. I wanted to just lay around all day. I wanted to take a lot of naps. Sometimes I ate to make me feel better and sometimes I didn't want to eat because I just couldn't because of my feelings inside. I didn't have very many highs. I didn't have very many things that like brought me joy and made me feel happy. I, but I had very, very intense lows. And when I say that, I mean they were so, so intense. Like. When I finally had a breakdown and finally got to a place where I was just like, I can't do this anymore. It was really, really hard and really bad for me. There were so many days that my mom or my husband got phone calls from me just saying, I don't want to live anymore. I want to end my life. I'm sorry, it's like 
so hard for me to talk about those things because it's so real. But there were so many times that I just thought, like, I can't feel this way anymore. Like, I can't go on feeling these types of ways because it's just too much. I didn't know how to move past that and I didn't know how to feel better. I thought that, you know, this is it. Like, this is how I'm going to feel for the rest of my life because I had gotten to gotten into a routine of feeling that way for so long that it became my new normal it became the way that i just understood how to feel and the phrase that misery loves company is very true when you are miserable for so long you find comfort in that because that's all you know and that became my normal which was so so hard for me thank god for my husband and for my mom and for the family members that constantly got phone calls from me and constantly you know heard about these things and heard me talking about how just frustrating my life was and it was so so hard so many days my point for coming on here is not to talk all about what i went through but i wanted to shed some light on how hard it was for me and how this year has been so so hard how suicide was something that I never ever thought that would be something that I struggled with but I did like I many many days thought about suicide I don't think that I ever would have done it but I'm sure that that's what so many people who commit suicide say I always said I will never kill myself but I want to kill myself that was always my my lingo that was always what I said it was so long of me feeling like that so long of me not telling anybody I was feeling like that literally only telling just a couple of those people in my life it got to a point where it was so bad for me that I literally felt like I couldn't breathe I felt like I was going insane I was having some health issues I think some GERD, which is just like acid reflux, heartburn. But it got so bad for me to a point that I just felt like I couldn't breathe and I was having panic attack after panic attack. I was having heart palpitations. I felt out of control. I felt like out of body experience. Like I couldn't control myself. I couldn't control what I was thinking, what I was feeling. Like it was just so bad that I took myself to the hospital three different times in one week just because I felt like I had no other choice. I convinced myself I was having a heart attack. I convinced myself that I had all these health conditions because I, I literally was like, something is wrong with me. Something is not right. I don't know how to go on feeling like this. Each time they kind of gave me the same answer that, you know, there's nothing wrong. All your tests are coming back fine. You're breathing fine. Like your blood works fine. All these things are fine. Like it's just anxiety. And I'm sorry if you are in the medical field or any anything please do not use the terminology please that is just anxiety or it is just depression because it's not just something it's not like it's something to just belittle it is a big deal and it is something that hinders people daily it is something that if you've never experienced it then you have no room to talk on it my reason for coming on here today isn't to just sit there and talk about everything that I've gone through. But my reason is to shed light on mental illness and talk about it because I feel like it's not talked about enough. It needs to be something that people are comfortable talking about. It needs to be something that people can educate themselves on it. Whether you've dealt with it or know somebody dealing with it, educate yourself on it. Understand that it's real. It's like so real. You know how many times people have said things like someone dealing with anxiety, they're just overreacting. They're just being emotional. They're just a worry ward. I hate that. I hate that that is like the, the stigma around anxiety. I hate that the stigma around depression is that, oh, they just hate their life. Oh, they're just playing, oh, woe is me. They're just sorry for themselves. Guys, it is so much more than that. And please take me seriously on this because like it is so disheartening because if you have never dealt with it, like you have no no idea how it feels to be in the mind of somebody going through a mental illness. No idea. But what you can do is you can educate yourself on it. I had a friend of mine that has been extremely helpful to me in this whole entire situation send me something recently. 
and I just wanted to read a little bit of it off to you because I thought that it was so so crucial for people to understand the thousands and thousands of feelings that somebody with anxiety can feel so when you say they're just dealing with anxiety this is what you're saying this is from anxietycenter.com so there's so much info and I'll have it linked down below in case you're curious about it but I'm just going to talk about some of the symptoms that people can feel from having anxiety you can have a, t a cough asthma back pain stiffness tension pressure soreness spasms blushing turning red a flushed face body aches your whole entire body can feel achy or sore body jolts body zaps body shakes body trembling body tremors body temperature increase or decrease brain surges brain zaps burning skin itchy crawly prickly skin a buzzing sensation in your feet toes hands fingers arms legs chest pain chest tightness a choking feeling chronic fatigue exhaustion super tired or worn out chronic pain clumsiness cold chills feeling cold all the time cold flashes cold hands and feet craving sugar sweets chocolate crazy thoughts difficulty speaking moving your mouth talking coordination problems with the mouth or tongue dizziness feeling lightheaded electric shock feeling electric pulsing throughout the body excess amounts of energy feel like you can't relax a falling dropping sensation feeling faint feeling ill and sick feeling like you're going to pass out feeling wrong different foreign odd or strange feel like the floor is moving or swaying flu-like symptoms you can feel ill frequent urination hair loss headaches hyperactivity hypersensitivity super sensitive to nerves hearing touch and taste migraines motion sickness muscle tension nausea neck pain neck back shoulder tension and stiffness nervous cough night sweats restless leg syndrome syndrome rib or rib cage tightness feeling like a tight band is around your rib cage sexual dysfunction sexual uninterest skipped heartbeats sudden urge to escape or run away tmj feeling weakness low energy feeling like you might faint yawning or excessive yawning heart palpitations and that's just some from this list of hundreds of feelings that you can feel so when somebody says they're just dealing with anxiety you have no idea what they're just dealing with it can be one thing on that list or it can be hundreds of things on that list anxiety is really really real it's not something to just joke around about or call someone a worry wart or make sly comments like they're just dealing with anxiety or they're just fearing it is a super super real feeling and depression feeling depressed is so real I don't think that most people understand that like feeling depressed is not just like hating your life or feeling sorry for yourself like it is literally a, 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 most times a chemical imbalance inside of your brain where you can't feel happy because there's an imbalance in there that's not allowing you to feel happy I saw something that Jim Carrey put out one time and it was going around on social media and it was really really hard for me um, to read it and see all the people sharing it because I felt like it was it was not talking about depression and anxiety in the way that it should be it was something along the lines of if you're feeling depressed and you're not getting good sleep eating well getting fresh air exercising and so on and so on then i'm not going to feel bad for you that is i'm sorry such an ignorant mindset because most of the time if you actually are depressed you physically can't do those things it can be hard some days to just get out of bed it can be hard to get yourself to exercise to get yourself outside it can be hard to choose the right foods for yourself so please if you have that mindset educate yourself on depression and anxiety or any type of mental illness and understand that it's not always just as simple as get up and do something and change your life most of the time somebody going through those things cannot just change their life they cannot just make the change and do something because they physically can't emotionally they cannot get themselves to the place to do those things so i feel like when people have mindsets like that it can be damaging to the community of people that struggle with this because we need people by our side that can help us get to those places like i said the reason for me coming on here was not to talk about all my issues but it was to shed light and it was to talk about it because I feel like it needs to be talked about more. And it was also to try and help people that maybe don't understand it. And to just give some advice for those of you watching that maybe you have someone in your life that is struggling with 
any type of mental illness or you have somebody or you don't have anybody please just hear me out i want to talk to you about the things that can help people going through something like this and the things that cannot because i've had a lot of people in my life tell me things that did not help me and i want to say that i know that if if you're one of those people and you're watching this that have said these things to me i know that it came from a place of love i know that these people love me beyond a shadow of a doubt but i also want others to know that there are certain things that are just not going to help someone going through this i have had so many times people in my life tell me stop worrying stop feeling that way stop thinking the worst stop always going to the worst possible scenario stop being a worry war think positively stop thinking so negative look at all the blessings in your life look at all what you have around you all those things may be true but they will not help somebody going through this situation. They will not. Because that's like telling an alcoholic to stop drinking. They already know that they need to stop drinking. They already know that that's what they want to do. But by you telling them that, it's not getting them anywhere. So telling me or anyone else that you need to stop thinking a certain way, you need to stop feeling a certain way, that's not going to help me. That's just going to put more shame and guilt on me and making me feel that I'm not behaving or I'm not performing in the right way that I should be. It just makes me feel more like a failure because I'm not performing in the right way. The things that you can say to someone that's going through any of these things is, how can I help you? I'm listening to you. I hear you. I'll listen as long as you need me to listen. Feel free to vent to me. Let me know if there's anything I can do. What can I do for you? Can I take you somewhere? Can I get you something? Can I help you find the resources that will help you? Can I help you find a doctor? Do you want to talk to someone? Do you want to take meds? Those are the types of things that get someone to the other side of this. Those are the types of things, or if you believe in prayer, can I pray for you? These are the types of things that I feel like are going to help somebody, not telling them what they shouldn't be doing that's not helping someone. So I just wanted to shed light on that because I feel like that's a really big error in mental health is telling people what they shouldn't be doing instead of trying to help them get to the other side. Sometimes with mental illness, it's just a big circle. Like you're on a hamster wheel and you just keep going. You're feeling depressed, you're feeling anxiety, maybe hating your life, wanting to kill yourself. And then when you're up from that really really low now comes the shame and the guilt for feeling those ways and then the shame and the guilt make you feel worse about your life make you feel worse about yourself so they lead you right back around that path again to hating your life having anxiety and feeling depression and it just keeps going and keeps going and I want to tell you today that if you're struggling with depression and anxiety or any mental illness don't feel shameful and don't feel guilty for feeling those ways so many times so many times i looked at my life and i said i have a house i have money coming in i have a wonderful husband i have amazing beautiful kids healthy kids what am i missing what am i lacking why do i hate my life why do i not want to live anymore i felt so guilty for feeling these ways because it was like I have no reason to feel that way but that needs to stop the guilt needs to stop so stop feeling guilty and stop feeling shame i had to learn that it's not situational for me i could have the best life and have everything i could possibly want or have a really hard life either way i was the one that was struggling with the issue it's not situational so don't put shame and guilt on yourself for feeling a type of way when maybe everything around you looks right because it's okay if you feel those types of ways, even when your life seems maybe perfect to the outsider. I think that mental illness and mental health needs to be talked about more and it needs to be, I don't want to say normalized because I don't want to think of it as something that's normal for people, but it needs to be normalized in the sense that we can talk about it, that we're not afraid to reach out and get help because that is so big that reaching out and asking for help is something that is so extremely hard for people especially when you're struggling with something like this to admit and say like i have an issue i have a problem that can be really hard and if you're in a place and you're struggling with that you can do it and i know it's hard and i know that it can be embarrassing but it's not you deserve to care for you you can't love others and you can't 
be the best version of you for anybody else if you're not loving yourself and you're not a healthy version of you. You deserve to take care of you. No matter what anyone around you is telling you, you truly deserve to take care of you. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart because I put myself on the back burner for so long and it didn't help. I kept ignoring everybody's advice to get help and to talk to someone or get on meds or whatever it was. And I didn't, I didn't listen until it got so bad to the point that I didn't have any other choice. My depression, my anxiety were demanding attention. I couldn't ignore them any longer. Don't ignore it. Choose you because you really, really do deserve it. I want everyone to understand that I didn't come on here to get attention or have anybody feel bad for me because that is the last thing that I need or the last thing that I want. I came on here to tell you my story, talk about something that's really hard for me to talk about, anxiety, depression, suicide, those are things that aren't easy, and shed some light and hopefully help others that aren't struggling with this and maybe have someone in their life or that don't have anyone but have just never open themselves up to educate themselves in this topic. There's so many things that I feel like need to change when it comes to mental illness. I feel that, like I said, it needs to be talked about more and it needs to be looked more seriously on. People need to take it ser more seriously because when someone comes to you saying that they're struggling with anxiety and depression, please take them seriously. Please understand that it's pretty real. It's not something to just like brush off your shoulder and never think about again reach out to those people please and don't just text them we have a voice we have a god-given voice for a reason but sometimes it's so easy to hide behind social media or texting use your voice call someone let them hear your voice invite them out to lunch as inconvenient as it may be for you or as inconvenient as it may be to have them over or whatever it may be choose other people we really truly need to do better suicide rates are at they're the highest that they've ever been and that breaks my heart it breaks my heart that people say things like it's the most selfish thing that somebody can do because i've heard those things that breaks my heart yeah they may be thinking about their life at that moment but you have no clue that if someone gets to that point that they honestly just feel like their life is worth nothing to end it so please please take these people seriously so i know that i've talked your, your guys's ear off and i'm not gonna keep you guys too much longer i really really appreciate if you came on here to listen to this and hear me out i felt like i couldn't just get back on and do makeup and do things without sharing all of this to you guys i do want to tell you just in case you are curious because i know there will be nosy people i am getting help for myself i did decide that i needed it and i finally came to that place of doing what i had to do and i don't think that i need to share all of those things with you guys because it's a part of my personal life i am getting help i am taking meds if i need the meds i am seeing someone and talking to someone but that's about as far as i feel that i need to share with you guys because it is my personal life this is the last thing that i want to say to you if you are watching this and you are struggling and you've ever had suicidal thoughts or you struggle just with not wanting to live anymore not liking your life feeling like you have no one you feel depressed on the daily and don't know how to help yourself or you have so many anxiety attacks and panic attacks on the daily i'm telling you i am here to talk to you i will do my absolute best to get back to every single one of you and if you don't want to comment on here publicly my instagram handle is down below and you can private message me and i promise that i will do my very best to get back to each and every one of you. I want to do better because I know how it feels to be in the position of someone going through this. I want to be able to help someone else. So if you are struggling with this, please reach out to me. Please feel no guilt or shame. I promise you there is no guilt or shame on this end. Please do not be embarrassed. You deserve to get help and you're loved. That's what I want to say to you guys today. I hope that you guys can respect that I may not be on here as much. I'm going to eventually get back to my regular posting. But I had to take time for me right now and I had to just pull away for a little bit to choose myself. I hope that you guys all can take something away from this and I hope that we can just do better and that this needs to be talked about more. So please take the time to educate yourself. I'm going to leave a few different links down below. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you stayed through this whole video, um, yeah, just that's pretty much it. I'm not going to ask you guys to subscribe or anything because I wasn't here for subscribe subscribers today i was here to just get my message out that i wanted to talk to you guys about anyways i love you all 
thank you so much again and like i said reach out if you feel like you need to because i'm here bye guys